You can now change jobs. You can access job specific abilities by changing jobs. Be careful though, you won't be automatically proficient in each job. You'll need to practice each new job to maximize its potential. So yeah, switching jobs a lot will give you like a couple battles where you have to um, adjust to the job basically. And there's like a four step alignment for each of these. There's like, there's like order and chaos leaning jobs. It may be light and dark or something, or no, physical, magical, chaos, order. And they're like, they go in each one's two of those. So there might be a physical order or whatever, chaos, magic. Either way, it, I don't think, free, I think for any Lancers is right in the middle, so it doesn't matter. Let's get our jobs going. So Luna, if we're going to start him out, like I said, we're going to do it like, their first set of jobs are gonna be what they look like in the FMV cutscenes, because why not? Luna, if you're gonna start out as a warrior. Two-phase adjustment. Ark, you can be our black mage. Rifia, you can be the white mage. And our spell sword, our red mage, is gonna be Ignis. Cool, huh? Okay. I'm gonna get to the world map, and then I'm gonna start setting up some equipment. Okay guys, I'm going to pause the game, and we're gonna be back in just a second. And because I'm cool like that, I completely forgot to hit the record button on Audition. Well, I thought I did, but obviously not. Obviously not. So, what did I do? I gave uh, Lunif his signature weapon for warriors, Gigantic Axe. The second best axe and some crystal gear. I gave Ark the best rod that a black mage has access to. Ribbon, a black robe to increase intelligence and the protect ring to boost stats and prevent death. Rifia gets two good stabs and then she gets the white mage exclusive angel robe. And then Ignis, I gave him Excalibur, which boosts all stats, which is pretty red mages through Crimson Vest, which is exclusive to Red Mages, and the Break Blade, because it has a chance to petrify, and Spell Swords are kind of a Red Mage thing, and it's kind of cool. As you can see, the green numbers indicate that there's equipment that's boosting the stats from their natural values. That'll go into calculations for battle, but it doesn't, for instance, determine how much health you're getting based on vit vitality. So, let's see. I'm doing this post-commentary after having beaten the game. So this is the one section where I know a little bit what I do next. Uh, of course, we're having the music go off in these instances where I'm accessing the cheat engine because it pauses. The game is set to pause when you click off of it. Going back into Kazoos here. Rifia doesn't want to enter. She doesn't want to see her father her father right now. But I'm oh wait. Ah yes, I have to go and return the mithril ring first. So, right now I've got the EXP tuned up to 10 times, I think. The idea is that I'm leveling up and getting stronger than everything else around me 
much faster than I usually should. But I'm maintaining it so I don't so I have plenty of levels by the time I unlock the last set of job classes. The reason for this is that there is one stat that does stay over time. Usually when you change uh, jobs, the stats just switch to whatever that job has at that level, plus your equipment modifiers. HP is not the same. HP is static among all jobs. And there's one job class that just has plain better vitality than everything else. It gets up to 99 vitality. So, if you're min-maxing, you really want to do a lot of leveling with that um, class. And you want to level as little as possible with classes that have the lowest vitality, like the Scholar. Or some of the Mage classes. And I don't worry about it too much because I know I can always just modify the stat. But I kind of want to get this semi-legitimately, even if I'm getting, you know, 10, 20, 100 times EXP. So, in this playthrough, I got to Black Belt, which is the class I'm talking about with the 99 Vitality, by level 70. From level 70 to 99, I got everyone to 9,900, 99 HP, except for Arc. So, and I think it would only take a couple more levels, so I think if you get to Black Belt by level, say, 65, then you're pretty, pretty good off on, um, getting to max health. I'm having a little controller problems right here. This game does this a couple times while I'm playing. This is the worst time it does it. It does it extremely badly, and I think I have to just cut the game off and come back in. As you can see, it's just it's just forcing the controller to go right, and I'm trying everything I can think of, unplugging the controller, plugging it back in, just messing around with the analog stick, trying to see if that fixes it, just nothing is fixing it. And I'm sort of just fighting it here. I'm trying to get to a save point so I can save and then restart the game. But this happens maybe two or three more times while I'm playing. But this is the only time where it just won't go away. The other times it lasts a couple seconds and I'm able to get it out. This time it just goes crazy. This game, I don't know why, it just really doesn't work well with controllers, even though that's what it's supposed to work with. Here, I just get hung up on a mountain. Yep, I mess around with it for a while trying to unplug the controller. It'll fix, and I should shut the game down any second now. It's, you know, it's kind of hard to maintain a good, ha uh, you know, happy go lucky sort of presenting attitude when you get stuck with really unexpected kinds of bullshit. It happens a couple times in this game. One of them has to do with just how bad this game can be with a controller sometimes. And then the other instance is that the side quests were set up very badly in this game. And I, well, I attempt to start doing them to get to the bonus dungeon, fight the super boss. It doesn't pan out. It's not, it doesn't, it, it just isn't gonna pan out. Because I need, like... I don't know what I need is the problem. I get different versions depending on where I look telling that was telling me like what you need to get to that bonus dungeon. And I couldn't even get like the letters from Mognet for some parts. So it just said screw it.
Now, obviously, these are going to be longer episodes. Uh, pretty much, I'm just cutting the episodes by the actual uh, quest, per quest, basically. So, our first quest was to beat the djinn, bring back the mithril ring, and unlock the chops from the water crystal. Basically, get through that freelancer step. After that, I'm just going to cut it up into the episodes based on, uh, you know, whatever your goal is, and then whenever you reach it, and get the next thing. Pretty much by boss fights, because that's usually how it's arranged in Final Fantasy. Whenever you get to your destination, there's a boss. But not always. Mm hmm. I did really enjoy playing through this, though, I gotta say. There's a lot of fun stuff that's gonna happen in this run. And there's a, something to say for the amount of variety we get by being able to shift jobs and just, you know, make the battles look prettier, funnier. Funnier, not funnier, funner. I kind of wanted to go with a certain route with each character. You know, Luna is always going to be our no magic, really, just physical fighter, master of weapons. And I kind of go back and forth between a lot. Whenever I need to like switch to a class, I'm kind of using Luna for that. For instance, like the Thief class, which is not actually part of your initial classes from the uh, Wind Crystal in the original version of this game. They added the Thief just to keep the uh, Final Fantasy 1 jobs all at once. But usually you get the Thief in the second, after the second crystal, which makes sense because there's a lot of areas where the Thief can do something special. And when it's class is like leading the party. And like I said, I tried to keep it so that I was like, I don't know why, but I was following the FMV cutscene. It begins the game that shows the characters as a warrior, a black mage, a white mage, a red mage. Honestly, there's the thing the problem is that there's no real evolution for the red mage to go into, like in terms of job classes. Or rather, if there is, I didn't really think of it myself. So, Ignis just kind of becomes a secondary physical fighter that sometimes gets a class that can cast magic. Eh. The Sage is kind of supposed to be an upgrade to the Red Mage, but it can't use the weapons a Red Mage can use, and it can't wear the armor a Red Mage can use. It just has a high level combination of white and black magic. And that's not necessarily the same as being an upgrade to the Red Mage. So I kind of hack up the Sage that I make Ignis at one point and give him all this equipment it usually can't wear. Why not, you know? So I think what I'm doing... What am I, what am I doing? Oh. I'm selling the gear that really doesn't do anything to uh, make my item list shorter. Basically what I did is I bought a bunch of knives over and over and over again and kept turning them into better items with the cheat engine, with the drop down uh, highlighted item ID list. It's not nearly as quick and efficient as just to have a items code, but that's not, it just wasn't in the table and I didn't want to, it's not that I don't know how to sort of find the variables and change them with the table, it's just that that process takes a while and I just, I wanted to play the game, I didn't want to play the cheat engine game, <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah, just a, just a breakdown of our classes again. Uh, Luna right now is a warrior. The warrior has pretty good offense abilities, and he can equip a lot of different types of weapons and armor. Its specialty, of course, being the axe, and it has the gigantic axe as its uh, job mastered item. A lot, all the jobs when you reach level 99, there's a character you can meet called the legendary smith. 
if you come to them, they will give you an item in exchange for having met level 99 with one of your classes. And it's an like item that only that class can use, unless you're a cheating bastard, like me. And they're usually very strong, either weapons or armor, that also give really big stat boosts, or can cast a really strong spell. Or both. So, the warrior has the gigantic axe. We made Ark into a black mage. The black mage is, of course, the offensive spellcaster. Um, it can learn up to level 8. It's not like the black mage, black wizard thing, like in Final Fantasy 1. They can learn all the way to up to level 8 magic. The difference is they have far fewer charges of the higher level magic. Their, uh, the number of MP they get is kind of like a pyramid. And here we have Sid the airship pilot joining our party, another party member. I forgot sometimes I'm supposed to be commenting on what's actually happening, but we get a lot of periods where I'm like just going somewhere. When you have these guest members, just like with Sarah, like I said, you can press the, um, you can press one of the face buttons to have conversations with them. You usually get a different conversation for each area you enter. Maybe not within the same village or dungeon, but in general areas. Oh, I see. I was trying to talk to Taka to continue his quest line, but I forgot that you actually have to talk to Sid first. Anyway, Ark is a black mage. They have a hierarchical structure for learning spells with the stronger spells getting less charged of. Um, the item the black mage gets as an exclusive item is the Lilith Rod, which as you can guess, gives you a pretty dang good boost to your intelligence. And it also has an, an uh, item use where you can cast death for free. Death for free. Um, I just never want to rely on instant death when I could just damage an enemy and kill him for sure in that turn. But it's kind of a neat thing. I'd rather it be like even something like Drain or like a dark associated magic spell. Or even if like, even if death did like a small amount of damage if it didn't kill or something like that. It'd be so much use, more useful. Refia is a white mage. It works the same as a black mage, except it's for supportive and healing magic. And her equipment is the angel robe that gives her more mind. And I want to say vitality too. But at the very least, it gives you more mind than just the white robes that you normally use. Finally, Ignis, Red Mage, one of my favorite classes. He can use staves and swords and rods and a lot of different kind of gear. He's not better than the warrior at doing direct damage with a sword. He's not. He's got less charges of, ma of white and black magic. And it takes longer for him to get the charges in higher levels. In fact, he only gets up to level 5. But, early game, that doesn't matter. Honestly, the Red Mage is the best class early game. The difference in damage is very small for the versatility you get. Like, a good party at the beginning of the game is like three Red Mages and a White Mage. Maybe switch one of the Red Mages out for a monk. And, okay, he got, I gave him Excalibur, which is a very good sword, and I gave him, I decided to give him a second sword instead of a shield. Generally, it's just better to have two weapons, because you can do so much more damage. You can actually do above 9,999 damage, you can do up to 99,999. So, you can definitely overflow the damage. Anyway, he had Excalibur and Breakblade, which has a chance to petrify really cool. I almost gave him Ancient Sword and Breakblade, so he had a chance for Petrify and Polarisis. 
But Excalibur gives you bonuses, plus 10 to every stat, which is a very Red Mage balance kind of thing. I thought that fit pretty well. Red Mage doesn't get any cool, like, ultimate weapons like it did before Lightbringer, where you can cast Holy. I'm really surprised. There's very, very few swords that actually cast spells. And the ones they do, they don't do them well. Like, Defender can cast Protect, but only on one character at a time. And Save the Queen can cast Reflect, but it's the same problem. Spells you would always want to cast party-wide. Though, I guess you really can't do that with the White Mage, either. Why the White Magic Protect doesn't work on the whole party. It actually makes the Bard really good, because the Bard can put Protect and Shell on the entire party, and Haste, just by switching weapons and singing, and it will always be the first action every turn. So the Bard is actually a very logical evolution for your white mage. A good replacement if you get tired of just seeing the traditional white mage for a while. I really like the bard class in this game. Ah, uh, so this little village is telling us about Desh, the guy who kind of ran off. You know there's just certain spells you're never going to use. Status spells, when we're bumping our damage so high, seem useless. Though poison actually does damage in this game, so that makes it good. It's more like bio, it's just like a weaker bio. So it's very, it's, it's still usable. Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy? Is that what that is? I don't know classical music very well. It's like the one genre I'm not very good at, like, recognizing songs in. But yes, this game is going to be a little slower paced, obviously, than Final Fantasy 1 and 2, if you can't tell by the first episode already. It, the battles just play out slower. It's a bigger game. Just We don't have the speed-up button of the emulator. There's a lot, just a lot of factors that stretch the game out. That's okay, because uh, honestly, it's... I think it's... Uh, I really like 2 for trying out like a real story. But, honestly, this is more fun than 1 and 2, I think. 1 is fun for its simplicity, but I think 3 is definitely the funnest of the NES games. Oh, she needs her dash. Old Deshi. He's probably the coolest um, guest party member you get. To. Spoiler alert. You have him for a good while. He's probably the one you have for the longest period of time. Uh, 
Oh yeah, Miss Sid is sick. You need to give her a elixir, which you can find in town. I'll give her the break blade. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Sid would appreciate that. There's a lot of, um, <clears throat> just being lost in this game. Like, you can read where something is, and it's not clear. I was using a strategy wiki guide while playing through this, and, uh, <clears throat> it's a bad guide. I found an IGN one at the very end, and it was so much better. I should have used it. <clears throat> I kind of like guides that have, like, visuals with them. Because, you know, I've used Game FAQs for years, you know, since that website was... A... Oh, man, that website is old as fuck now. But, I don't know. I just think there's some... It, it should have evolved more by now. And they sort of changed the look a little bit with some of the newer guides, but... It... A replacement has to be on the way. Like, a legitimate, widespread replacement for game FAQs. And it's, um... Very archaic style. I think I'm giving myself more elixirs. occurred to me and I'm taking this opportunity to uh, silence my phone before you get a warm hot buttery delicious coming at you randomly. If you've never uh, looked up the YouTuber Ray Sype, he's amazing. Look him up. He puts up videos every day. My inspiration for putting up videos every day. But uh, he does a, uh, there's a, one of his videos, which good luck finding any video of his, as much as he uploads anything with the strange names he gives it. But, uh, when there's just a video where he's just talking about pancakes, and I use that as my text ringtone. Warm, hot, buttery, delicious. It sounds really great out of context. I love that. Oh, is this the gear that Sid's got hidden in his uh, basement? Yes, it is. Sorry, I was turned away for a second. I mean, I've got, I've got a good two hours of composed commentary I have to put in for this section of the game, so we'll keep it casual. Ugh. We spent a lot of time in that city. A lot of time. But now it's time to move on. The old Dragon's Peak. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know where I'm going. Where I'm going. Trying out some of the magic items I have equipped it, I think. There's death. Hey, it actually hit. 
So at this point in the game, I have it so I level up my job after every battle. I sort of realized just how much time that take that adds up to, and I just flat out set the levels to 99 later in the game. Especially since I know I'm not going to be using the job for the whole game. There's a lot of there's a lot of enemy variety in this game, but there's also a lot of recolors. And you say it's really weird when you start seeing an enemy and a recolor of that enemy in the same area. But that's not gonna be a problem for a bit, because there's in the game there's plenty of enemy types, enemy models. I kinda like the two-handed combos, like the uh just the way they swing things, especially when you start doing like 32 hits, which is the max. 16 hit per weapon. I like how each character has little signatures that, even if they're all the same job, they'll look different. I think that's neat. I kind of like to watch a, a run, like a speed run, where they were using everybody in the same job classes or something like that. That might be fun. Or just any speed run. There's so many variables for how you could play through this game. I'm curious what, like, the most efficient people have come up with is. Let me go look that up after I've been recording this. Get arrow, and anytime I'm picking up these spells or getting whatever, I'm always bumping it up so I have extra ones when I need them. So that's what I'm doing right here. I get myself like five copies of arrow. I really don't need 48 copies of your persona, and they don't even sell well, so it's like, eh. I thought that was kind of neat that uh, the white mage has more than just holy as a damage spell that they get to use the wind elemental spells to damage enemies. Especially since so many enemies in the game are weak to wind. Any bird-like enemy or flying enemy, pretty much. There's very few enemies in this game that don't have an elemental weakness, which is more common than we're... It does, there's more enemies with elements of weaknesses than there typically is in a Final Fantasy game, I think. I think it's to keep the different uh, spellcaster classes viable for longer.
I perform a quick save thinking it doesn't to return me to the menu. Obviously, I'm wrong. I'm doing that because you're not supposed to be able to win this upcoming fight with Bahamut, but I wanted to try and see if I could actually damage it, which might result in me game over. Obviously, you cannot damage him. Now, apparently it is possible to damage him in the NES version. Or maybe even in this version it is, and I'm still just not strong enough. The thing is, though, if you beat Bahamut here, he doesn't appear in his optional dungeon later in the game, so you can't actually get him as a spell to summon. So you're really just hurting yourself if you do this. And the game is really nice here and it revives your characters if you lose a couple before you can escape. And here Desh has joined our party and he's giving us many. Dash is joining the party. 